Welcome to another installment of our tutorial series for On Air Airline Manager. In today's tutorial, we will discuss the FBOs, or Forward Bases of Operations. Before we get going, I want to throw out a huge welcome back to all of the Wolfpack members, and if you are new to the channel and just finding us, I want to extend an invite to you to join the Wolfpack Gaming community by hitting the subscribe button down below. Don't be so eager to click away. After going through the FBO setup process, I discuss a few ideas and tactics that I think are important for locating and setting up your FBOs that you may find useful as well. FBOs are a necessity for any airline to survive and thrive. In on air, they are also essential to keeping your fleet in tip top shape, limiting or eliminating some overhead costs as well as providing maintenance, fuel at your own cost, and the ability to store cargo in your own warehouse and not pay somebody else to store it. Today we're going to set up my second major FBO at O'Hare International Airport in Chicago, Illinois. I will first dive into the skills tree as it relates to the FBOs. You first need to open up the option to even construct an FBO by adding a single point to the FBOs agreement tab as you level up in the game. As you can see in my skills tree, I made this a priority as I wanted to make sure that I was getting fuel and maintenance at cost as soon as possible. The workshop agreement tab allows you to construct workshops at your FBO and hire mechanics to work on your own aircraft. There are two levels to this tab. The fuel seller agreement tab allows you to sell fuel to other players in the on-air world. Before this tab is unlocked, the fuel you order at your own FBO is only for you. The mechanics training tab increases your mechanics speed and efficiency by 5, 10, and 20% respectively with each set of two skill points that you add to this tab. And finally, the Workshop Selling Service tab allows your mechanics to work on other players' aircraft at your FBO at a markup price, and you can make money. Every airport that you serve does not need an FBO. Airlines in real life use this rule as well. In On Air, there is no limit to how many FBOs that you can have in the world, but you can only construct one FBO at any one airport. Strategic placement at your most frequently used airports is key. Each FBO incurs a weekly cost, and depending on the size, the expense can be quite substantial. So what do FBOs do for you? I'm going to click on the ORD icon and bring up the airport sheet for O'Hare International Airport in Chicago, Illinois. On the right is a list of all competing FBOs that are either in operation, under construction, or being upgraded. I've already decided that I'm going to create an FBO here as well, so I'm going to click the Create an FBO tab on the top right and we will break down each category and what each of those do as we plan out this FBO. Our FBO name will be Wolfpack Airlines YouTube, which will be the same for any other FBO that I create, and I'm going to keep it consistent. Right underneath the name, we will set the amount of cargo that we will likely store here in a cargo hangar, so we don't have to pay the airport to hold our cargo. I will discuss a good tactic for cargo hangars near the end of this video. Cargo hangars have a maximum of 500,000 pounds. Fuel tanks allow you to construct an appropriate sized fuel tank for your own use or to sell to a player if you have that tab opened up in the skills tree. You can construct general aviation fuel or jet fuel tanks. Each tank is limited to 500,000 gallons, but as I understand it, you can have more than one tank of each to increase your capacity. I have not tested that feature yet. Over here, you can then set your fuel price to sell to other players, but we are not going to worry about that initially as it will take a few days for our tanks to be constructed and then another day or so to have the initial fuel delivered. We'll come back to that later. Crew rooms are areas of the FBO that your non-based crew members can rest in. I will discuss this a little bit more at the end of the video as well. There's a limit of 50 crew rooms at each FBO. Aircraft hangars and tie-downs allow your aircraft to park at the FBO without incurring a parking fee for extended parking times. After selecting and verifying your initial FBO features and size, click the Get Quotation tab to see an itemized list of how much each item will cost, a time frame for each item, and very important, the weekly ownership cost. Construction will not start until you click Accept. You will see that O'Hare International Airport has a, now has a square logo instead of a circle. That means we have an FBO either under construction or present. And we can monitor our FBO progress by selecting the FBO Chicago O'Hare International Airport right here. We can see that it is being upgraded and that gives us an overall upgrade completion day, which is 11 real-time days from right now. If we wanna drill down further and see when each feature will be done and the timeline, we can click the Manage FBO button and then we can hover over and it will tell us we're adding 30,000 uh, pounds of capacity here and then each of these things will be done at different times and it will tell us each one. After your initial FBO has been started, you can now get a quotation to work on the different workshops, assuming you have this opened up in the skills tree. 
I want to be able to work on single-engine pistons, multi-engine pistons, turboprops, and jets. That's everything that we currently have in the fleet, and I will go ahead and get a quotation for that. And then we can accept this workshop to be also star construction for our FBO at O'Hare. I mentioned at the beginning of the video that I would share a few of the tips that have worked for me regarding FBOs, so let's jump right into those. If you are following the on-air series that I have on the channel, you will know that I set up my first FBO at Orange County Airport in Montgomery, New York. Although this airport is cool because it's close to my house, I believe that was a mistake picking a small airport as a base as available jobs were rather limited. After days of gameplay and a few episodes in, I found it necessary to move over to Stewart International Airport only a few miles away. Stewart is much bigger, a size 5 airport with a lot more opportunity for local and long distance jobs. I recommend picking a larger airport to base your airline from. As we said before, I like to space out my FBOs at the major airports in my system. Currently I have Stewart International Airport for my base in the Northeast region, and you watch me set up my O'Hare International Airport, which will become my base in the Midwest. When my longer haul missions become less desirable, I send my larger aircraft with the larger cargo capacities to gather small jobs to bring back to the cargo hubs. Then I use my smaller aircraft like the Beechcraft 350s or the Cessna Grand Caravan or even the Embraer 145 to disperse these smaller jobs to smaller airports more efficiently. Those aircraft can land at smaller airports and the landing fees are less. Speaking of landing fees, your landing fees are reduced by 70% at any airport where your FBO is operating. Make sure you pre-plan and evaluate your FBO locations. As you saw before, it will take 11 real-time days for my Chicago FBO to be fully operational. The construction isn't instantaneous and it will take time. Another mistake I made initially is your initial FBO will likely not need crew sleeping quarters. Most of your crew will likely be based there and if they're idling at the home base, they do not use the airport rest area. They simply rest at home. In the skills tree, try and open up fuel seller agreement as early as possible as it suits your gameplay style. Monitor your FBO airport sheets for changes in competing airline fuel prices and adjust yours accordingly. Make sure also to monitor your available fuel so you can reorder or increase your capacity as needed. The same can be said for workshop service selling. The skill points that I earned for my last level up will likely go towards opening that feature up. I must then monitor that I have a competitive markup price for maintenance compared to any of the other airlines at an FBO. Along those same lines, I went for workshops agreement early in the game to limit my cost for maintenance. A lot of money is saved on having my own mechanics and workshops working on my own aircraft. If you enjoyed this tutorial or you learned something, please drop a like and consider hitting that subscribe button and setting your notifications to all. Check out the next video in this tutorial series popping up on your left, or if you'd like to catch my Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 career mode series using On Air, check out the playlist that is popping up on your bottom left. On your right, YouTube is showing you another video you may enjoy on this channel, and if you also enjoy survival and military games, consider subscribing to my second channel showing up right now. Click any one of those links or anything in the pinned comment or description down below and we will see you over there.